This is the Archie Miller Show, an inside look at Dayton Flyers basketball through the eyes of the coach. Now, here's your host, Larry Henskin. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Archie Miller Show. Mike Hartsock has got the uh, week off, so I'm sitting in for Mike this morning with the coach, Archie Miller. As the Dayton Flyers began Atlantic 10 Conference play yesterday, at home, an early start, and a 67-59 to loss to uh, St. Louis. And, Coach, before we get into the specifics of yesterday, uh, let's, let's put the finishing touches uh, on your non-conference schedule. Uh, you, you won the game a week ago at Ole Miss. And then in the meantime, after that, getting ready for St. Louis, did you kind of reevaluate your team? Well, I think we put the uh, non-conference um, portion of our schedule to bed, talked a lot about what we accomplished, and then we really focused in on what we have to do here over the next couple months to have the, <clears throat> the best chance we can of getting the highest seed we possibly can in the A-10 tournament. And um, started off obviously at home. We had our bye week here very early, had a week to prepare. And uh, unfortunately, during that week, we probably got a little nicked up. Uh, and it, and it, it may have cost us some rhythm during the week. But uh, I thought our kids played extremely hard against St. Louis. Offensively, we weren't very good. Um, and we weren't very smart, which We'll get that corrected with a good film session. And, um, you know, you have to have short-term memory loss, win or lose in conference play, because most of the time within 48 hours you're back on the road or you're back on the court again. And um, our league is one right now that's very, very good, and everyone you play is good. And I think at the end of the day uh, you have to be the same sort of every week. So we know what, where, where we're going. We know what we're about. We know how we have to do it. And um, now it's about being consistent home and away. All right, the Flyers with the unenviable task of opening up against the defending league champions. The St. Louis Billikens came in already with one A-10 win under their belt. And let's head out to the arena and take a look at our first half highlights. Well, Dwayne Evans is by about as good a player as they've got. Maybe one of the top players in the league as he found low. Yeah, both of those guys, two seniors. You can see their improvement over the course of their career. Both guys very, very consistent Atlantic 10 performers. Now, Deshaun Pierre got to the rim, and you got to the rim in the first half especially. Yeah, I thought first half in particular, first eight to ten minutes, you know, we got some easy baskets inside that we didn't put in. And, you know, in the first eight to ten minutes also, we're playing pretty consistently with the lead defensively. But, you know, give St. Louis credit. There's a reason they're one of the best defensive teams in the country, and they showed it yesterday. Now, Jordan Arjet coming off a 31-point performance, and he's more of a defensive guy. And there again, you get to the rim with Jordan Seibert. Good drive by Jordan, a really good screen that was set by Devin um, to free him up. And then uh, he, he got one of our rare finishes at the basket. And there's a great finish by Matt as well as he drove the close out and be able to put it in. Matt's really turned the corner for us a little bit. Hopefully he'll get healthy again and we'll have him back in there. Now, Jordan Jet living up to his name, just lightning quick. Yeah, he's really tough to handle. Um, he's really an improved scorer. Um, he's really their point guard. And there's a good drive by V in transition as well. Yeah. We, we get to see a lot of the layups that were made in that first half, but we don't have enough time on this show to, <laughs> for the ones that, that, that you yeah. missed. Some, some, some point blank shots were obviously makeable. I didn't think some were great shots either um, that we took. You know, some were forced, and St. Louis makes you play that way. But good finish there by Kendall, and uh, you know, we're going to need a lot of our guys to really step up. This guy right here played terrific. He's a game changer for him. Austin McBroom can really shoot the ball. Yeah, he stepped in for Mike McCall Jr. and more than made up for his absence. And you now Kendall trying to be physical. Well, it's a physical game, and anytime you get that ball into the paint against St. Louis, there's going to be contact. And Kendall's got to lead more with his with his dribble, not his shoulder. But you know, it's funny, Larry. You, know, you hear a lot about all these refereeing changes and rule changes, and that was a typical A-10 referee game yesterday. Very physical. Now Jalen Robinson did a little work on the glass and. Boy, a guy that just could not buy a basket was Devin Oliver, but Jalen able to clean it up. A good tap. We had a couple good plays there at the end of the half that actually gave it a workable distance here at halftime. Um, it could have been a little bit worse. We were able to put a couple in. And, um, you know, halftime was about regrouping a little bit, keeping calm. You know, we've, against the best teams on our schedule, you know you're not going to have, uh, feel great at times. And, um, you know, I think we really focused in offensively about, you know, really trying to get the movement going a little bit, trying to get some inside out really correcting some of the things they, they took away from us in the first half to see if we could adjust and putting some baskets in, you know, around the rim. 
defensively had to continue to really do a good job uh, scrambling and playing hard with all their ball screens and our rotations um, and try to do a great job rebounding the ball. And, um, but the second half really became more of the first. We had our opportunities, I thought, to really cut in there and get, get a chance to play, uh, maybe even with a lead. And, you know, two or three opportunities uh, just kind of caved in from an offensive perspective, which led to them being successful on offense. I looked at the stat sheet at halftime, and at the half, you had outscored St. Louis in the paint. You had outscored them in points off of turnovers. You had outscored them in second chance points. Usually, if you look at those numbers, you're looking at a, at a, at a working margin or maybe even a comfortable lead. Yeah, you know, uh, there was a lot of numbers that were pretty good. You know, our first half defensive numbers, although the percentages were high, it had a lot to do with our misses and our turnovers. Thought we played hard. We rebounded the ball pretty well in the first half. And then, and, you know, obviously you have to think that something's going to come back around your way when you're missing a couple point blank shots. You know, Devin, I've watched him play here a lot. And, you know, he got a, some of the same shots he normally is getting. He got in the first half. They just didn't go down. So by the law, the average is when you look at our field goal percentage and you look at our players' numbers over the course of a year, you would think some of those things could come around. It just wasn't our day around the basket. All right, Flyers down nine at the half. So it's certainly within striking distance as we head back to the arena. And you got off to a decent start to start the second half, although Devin there again just cannot buy a hoop. Yeah, that was a tough one there. We got the ball screen kicked back to him, and he's really playing well off of closeouts. And that was a breakdown underneath out of bounds assignment there on our part. And I can't give Barnett any easy looks. Great effort on the glass by uh, Devin Scott. Keeps it alive, and then Deshaun was able to put one in. But even Deshaun, uncharacteristically, didn't play well around the basket yesterday. And they, they continue to bring in fresh troops. I thought you, maybe you had more depth than them, but their bench played well. Bench played very, very well. They got a lot of productivity out of their bench. And in most cases, our bench really can overwhelm you at times with, with our ability to score. But our bench didn't get as much done as it typically has. And, uh, you know, you need against a good team like St. Louis, you're going to need everybody. Now, Dwayne Evans just, I, I think he might be the most complete player certainly on the St. Louis team. And then Austin McBroom right there with the steal and then the dish to Jordan Jet, as you said earlier, might have been the difference in the game. Yeah, I think it really was the difference in the game and he played terrific. There's a good drive by, by Scooch there off the ball screen. He made a good play right there. and uh, He didn't have his best effort yesterday, but I think he's coming around a little bit. And there's a good shot. He went under the ball screen, a good screen, good shot by Jordan. He was able to get freed up a couple times there in the second half and he made a couple. And, the game was in working distance around the back 10 minutes. We just, we could not get the big play on offense to go down. Yeah, Good drive. Yeah, defensively for the most part, you got stops when you needed one, like right there. We did, we got a lot of stops. And, you know, I've seen this play come a lot. You know, I'm not sure Devin even looked at the basket on that one. He was almost just hoping it would go in. And uh, when we had turnovers and we had a bunch, uh, they had a bunch in the second half. Typically that's when we're really good, defense to offense. And yesterday I thought for the first time maybe since I've been here, defense to offense wasn't good at all. Good drive, good shot by Kari. Yeah, he continues to battle the sore knees, but, you know, giving you everything he's got. Yeah, yesterday was as well as he'd moved all in probably about a month and uh, probably had a lot to do with us not having a game midweek. So this will be a big stretch for him here in January, being able to adjust the two games a week regularly. <clears throat> all right, so the Flyers fall 67-59. to 59. Uh, Jordan Seibert shoots the ball well early and late uh, to lead the way with 15 to uh, Deshaun Pierre. Not a great percentage, but he did score 13, was active on the glass. And, and I think uh, maybe the one thing that's a, a takeaway of the positive note, we already mentioned you, you made some stops, and, and the effort was there. Maybe you played uncharacteristically bad offensively, and I think that's probably better than if you'd gone out and you were who you were and it wasn't good enough. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to obviously improve on, and not just when you play St. Louis again, but understanding the level of detail, how you got to take care of the ball, uh, finishing strong in conference play. The referees are going to change the game from this point forward. It's going to be a physical game. You're going to be on the road. You got to put the ball in the basket. And you know, somebody told me before the game it was the number one offense in the league versus the number one defense in the league. And I said, where do you get those numbers? And they said, well, you're leading the league in every statistical category from field goal percentage to three point field goal percentage to, to rebounding. And you know, you look at our scoring average at 77. I said, well, we'll see how it goes today. And you know. Just kind of nipped you right in the, <laughs> in the butt when it happened. But, uh, but I feel good. I've told our players I feel good about who we are.
and uh, I do, and I think we're going to be fine. All right, and getting better. This is still a pretty young basketball team. We're going to get to know one of the young freshmen <clears throat> when Mike Hartsock sits down with Kyle Davis when we continue on the Archie Miller Show. Flyer fans, are you looking for some new gear for the games? There's no better place to look than the Corporate Casuals Fan Shop. They've reopened down on Brown Street next to BW3s, carrying the best selection and the best brands of flyer attire for men, women, and children. They're open down on Brown Street during normal business hours, and you can also shop on the concourse at the arena during every Flyers home game. Corporate Casuals, the official outfitter of the Archie Miller Show. Welcome back to the Archie Miller Show. I am here at the Cronin Center with uh, Kyle Davis, one of the three freshmen on this team, and and time to to learn a little bit more about the new guys. We've we've seen you on the court. We've heard you a little bit in interviews and stuff like that. But uh, you are uh, from suburban Chicago, Morgan Park High School, uh, state championship at Morgan Park. Uh, tell us a little bit about growing up uh, in suburban Chicago. Uh, just growing up on the south side of Chicago, you know, a lot of people. Uh, look at you as a bad kid because you're from the south side of Chicago and uh, you're not really good uh, school-wise, academically-wise. So, you know, it was kind of rough. Okay, south side of Chicago, that's White Sox territory. Uh, and and you, I, you see from tattoos or, or a tattoo on you that, uh, that you're a White Sox guy and, uh, and have always been a White Sox guy, right? Correct. Not a Cubs guy? No. Hate the Cubs? <laughs> I wouldn't say hate them, but uh, I'm just a big Sox fan. Okay. That's one tattoo that's on you. How many tattoos from head to toe do you have on your body? Uh, I think I have about 21 tattoos altogether. Starting at the age of? Um, freshman, freshman year of high school, actually. First tattoo, what was that? Uh, my initials. And the last tattoo? Uh, my last tattoo was the, uh, the sleeve I have on my leg that's uh, all about Chicago. And when did you get that one? Um... I want to say my junior year. Okay. Yeah. Are, you, are you done or are you just waiting for a while? No, nah, I'm just waiting for a while. I feel like uh, in the summertime I'm going to have a lot more. All right. Talk about people finding out a little bit more about you. They did that when uh, you guys played in Maui in, in one signature moment. You, you had a moment against Cal that, uh, that lit things up out there and, and, and really made an impact, not only in that building, but, but across the country. Uh, talking about the slam dunk where you went in with two hands. And, and uh, you had talked to Scoochie about that, what, a few minutes before? Yeah, um, it was actually three plays before, and Coach had drew up almost the same play. And I had said, I said, uh, told Scoochie the next opportunity that I was going to go down the middle and slam it. And you did just that. Uh, and, and it kind of opened up. I think a lot of people thought, uh, you know, okay, who is this guy going up with a, with a two-hand jam? And, and Coach told me afterward, he goes, well, I knew he could dunk, but I'd never seen him do it in a game. Uh, did, was, that a, was that a nerve-wracking thing, or was it, was it just spur of the moment? No, it was kind of spur of the moment. You know, everybody didn't know what I was going to do, and I, I just seen the lane open and took my chance. After the game. Cell phone loaded with texts and uh, messages and stuff? Yeah, after the game, I had a lot of text messages talking about the dunk and telling me good job and everything. Talk a little bit about your game. Uh, you're coming in here, of, of the three freshmen, you're the undersized one pretty much. Uh, you're, you're a guy who, who probably needs to get in the weight room and, uh, and, and get a little bit... Uh, Get it a little bit more on that frame. Is is that the biggest concern that that you had coming in to play college basketball? Uh, really, I didn't have no concern about my size because I knew coming into college that I was a I was a, a tough kid. You know, I love playing defense and love to play against people bigger than me to show them I can I can play with them. Now, defense is in this program something that earns you minutes. You found that out pretty quickly, didn't you? Yeah, you know, it, it earns minutes and also it get my team going, so I love playing defense. Talk about you three freshmen, two of you from the city and, and another one from, from New York. Uh, so three big city guys. Uh, has it been tough for you guys to come to Dayton where it's uh, not quite as crazy as maybe Chicago or New York? Uh, no, I don't think it's kind of crazy. You know, it took a lot of time for us to adjust to get used to it, but I think... All three of us really enjoying the atmosphere from the fans. 
what do you wh- where, where do you like to go in town when you're not playing basketball you're not hitting the books uh, is is there a spot that you enjoy going to in town um probably the mall i could say all three of us probably like to do just go go out there and just relax as you look at not quite halfway in through your first season uh, what's the one thing you've noticed now that you're playing games that that you say okay i got to get a little bit better at this um I noticed, you know, the competition level is getting uh, harder and harder every game we go through. So it just shows me that I just got to continue to work hard in the gym and work hard with my team. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. Kyle Davis, uh, one of the freshmen here from Chicago. And we'll continue with more of the Archie Miller Show in just a couple of minutes. So don't go away. Welcome back to the Archie Miller Show, and we're going to kick the coach out of here for a second, bring in uh, one of the freshmen, Kendall Pollard, joining us. Uh, Kendall, uh, we talked earlier to Kyle Davis, and uh, you guys back home in Chicago don't live very far from each other, do you? No, not too far. We live like a couple blocks away from each other, so hang out every once in a while. But went to different schools. I think most people know now that uh, that you went to Simeon and, uh, and and played on a team last year that was, uh, I don't know, a lot of colleges would, would take the talent that, that was on that high school team last year. Yeah, we had uh, four Division One players on the team, so it wasn't, it was really exciting, like, playing with those guys, and I still keep up with those guys and talk to them, like, every week. Yeah, Jabari Parker's down at Duke having been playing good things, and and you are starting to, to kind of get a feel for yourself in college basketball. Took you a few games, but but these last several games, you're starting to feel a little bit more at home, aren't you? Yeah, I'm starting to get more comfortable. Uh, Coach Miller, he um, he um, he told me I, to just worry about one position on the floor. So I'm starting to get more comfortable with all the plays. I know most of the plays now. So I'm just getting more comfortable. I'm just letting my instincts take over and just play the game. How tough is it after being being used to starting every game in high school to come here and to come off the bench and, and to, to try and get that kind of energy going coming off the bench? Oh, it's not too bad because I know uh, it's, a, it's another level that I'm on. It's not high school anymore, and I got guys in front of me that's older, more, more experienced, and like Devin Oliver is a good player, so... I can respect that. You look at your game and, and the way that, that we've seen you develop here in the first six weeks of the season. Uh, this is this is just a start of what we've seen developing. But uh, coming in, you look at your body. And, and your body has to be a little stronger to play where you want to play, right? Uh, I might not look as strong as I am, but I'm, I'm really strong. Uh, I play a real finesse game. I play a real physical. And... Uh, but my body has changed a lot since I've been there over the summer until now. So it'll be a little bit better by the end of the season. Talking to Kyle about this, uh, you guys from Chicago coming here to, to Dayton. It's a smaller community. It's it's not the not the, the you know the bells and whistles that Chicago is. But uh, do you enjoy that? Do you enjoy getting away from the big city life? No. You don't? <laughs> no. What's uh, tough about Dayton? Uh, it's tough. Just like uh, it's no downtown. It's like downtown Chicago, it's a whole, it's a whole another level. Uh, I go shopping downtown almost every Sunday when I'm at home, and it's just fun to just get out and just see all the people, all the tourists shopping and all that stuff. Now, since you've been here, uh, what I guess it was late July, maybe something like that. You guys got into town. Uh, haven't you've had a chance to get home some, but uh, but not get home a lot. Uh, is homesickness set in yet? Um, towards the summer, I was real sick, like, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't breathe, like, sick. But now, uh, this is my new home. I guess it's safe to say that this is my new home. So, I'm not as homesick as much, but I still would like to go home every once in a while. What's the one thing that, that you've looked at in, in this first six weeks of the season, where during a game, after a game, whatever, you've said to yourself, okay, I got to get better at that. I just got to get better at, like, rebounding, like, uh, just going after the ball, just hustle plays, getting on the floor. I don't do a lot of getting on the floor. I have to start doing more of that. 
like getting on those 50 50 balls. You look at the way this team has played uh, and, and opening some eyes early, uh, but this is just kind of scratching the surface, isn't it? This is a young team. You guys, you guys are still learning to play with each other. Um, not really. We all really know like what each other can do. We just got to start put all the pieces together and just start winning one game. Kendall Pollard, best of luck to you as you uh, go on down the road your, your freshman season. We'll, we'll be watching. All right. Thanks. All right. We're going to take another break here on the Archie Miller Show. We'll be back with Coach and Larry in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back to the Archie Miller Show. I'm Larry Hanskin is uh, in for Mike, who's uh, got the day off in Dayton. Coming off the home loss to St. Louis on the road this week for two games at Fordham on Wednesday and then at Richmond on Saturday. Uh, no one's going to feel sorry for you, Coach. No one feels sorry for anybody this time of year. Everybody's trying to get the same thing. And uh, you know, I think for our team to stay in the race and be the best that we can be, we have to be the same. You know, we didn't play our best against St. Louis. That doesn't mean we can't be better on Wednesday at Fordham, and that's what we're going to try to do. All right, Fordham uh, with one of the uh, top scoring uh, individuals in the league, and freshman John Sevier, and also Brendan Fraser in the backcourt. That's a 9 o'clock tip you'll be able to watch on uh, Channel 7 Wednesday night, plus the uh, selfish, uh, selfish plug to listen on WHIO Radio. And then at Richmond Saturday at 3 o'clock. Of course, we'll have that game as well on WHIO Radio. And then back next Sunday on the Archie Miller Show.